top stories on the brief at this hour. The crisis rocking the Kano State Emirates Council took another turn yesterday as a federal high court set aside all steps taken by the Kano State government to repeal the Kano Emirates Council law. Well, the Kano House of Assembly had repealed that law, after which Governor Abba Yusuf assented and reinstated Mohammed Sanusi II as the 16th Emir of Kano. However, a kingmaker and the former Kano Emirate, Aminu Baba Denagundi, the second Dewaki Baba, challenged the propriety of the law and asked the courts to declare it null and void. In his ruling, the presiding judge, Justice Abdullah Liman, ruled the Kano State Government and the Attorney General were aware of its restraining order granted virtually on May the 23rd, but decided to believe that the order was made abroad. But it's quite interesting how the lawyers interpreted this judgment. Take a listen. The application made by the claimant, or I'm sorry, the, 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 the plaintiff, I can say, that he wants this court to declare the law first, legitimately first by the State House of Assembly, that is Kano State House of Assembly, that is the second respondent, Nold and Boyd. But this court clearly stated in its ruling that he can, he doesn't have the wire with the, the jurisdiction and the power to declare a law that is passed legitimately by the State House of Assembly. But he came to the conclusion and agreed that though the attitude of the first and the first defendants, that is the Colonel State Government and the Attorney General of Colonel State, they are in disobedience of court order that was issued. That was the interim injection that was earlier issued on 23rd day of May 2024. But uh, what the law says, or the rules of the court says, where there is violation of lawful court orders or directives, the court should what, commit that person, after satisfying himself with proof, has to commit that person to prison. But not to declare any of the action is the illegal or non or void or whatever. The court has nullified all steps taken after the order it made. And that those steps were taken in breach of the court order. And that is all. Subsequently, the court has granted civil proceedings. This matter is before the Court of Appeal. No court can take any further steps until the Court of Appeal determine the case at the appeal before it on the issue of jurisdiction. Okay. So, uh, so even the matter that was filed to Court 2, the Court 2 cannot, the, the, that court cannot take any further step until the result of the outcome of the Court of Appeal. Okay. So the matter is now before the Court of Appeal. It's not, this is not the end of the matter. Okay. That is it. Well, indeed, definitely not the end, as the state government has ordered the post-Emir Aminu Adobayoro to vacate Nasser Mini Palace. At a press conference, the Kano State Attorney General, uh, Haruna Dederi, emphasized the need for the renovation of a facility which is solely owned by the state government. Dederi says the ruling of a Kano State High Court validates the actions of a state government, noting that Emir Mohammed Sanusi remains the Emir of the prestigious Kano Emirate, adding that, by implication, Aminu Adobayoro trespassed on the Nasser Mini Palace. The Kano State Government acknowledges the ruling by the Federal High Court regarding the Kano Emirates Council Repeal Law 2024 and views theme as <coughs> upholding the rule of law. By the ruling of the court, it has unequivocally reaffirmed the validity of the law passed by the Kano State House of Assembly and assented to by His Excellency the Executive Governor of Kano State on Thursday, the 23rd of May, 2024, by 5.10 p.m. This part of the judgment is fundamental to the entire matter. Further implication of the ruling is that all actions done by the government before the emergence of the interim order of the Honorable Court are equally validated. This means that the abolition of the five emirates created in 2019 <coughs> is also validated and the deposition of the five emirs is equally uh, sustained by the Federal High Court. By implication also, this means that Muhammad Snusi II remains the emir of Khan. The judge also granted our application for the stay of proceedings until the Court of Appeal deals with the appeal before it on jurisdiction. Happily, the signing of the law and the reinstatement of His Highness the Emir of Kano, Emir Muhammad Snusi II, were done on the 23rd of May 2024 before the emergence of the interim order, which was served on us on Monday, 27th May 2024. 
Well, the court have been busy elsewhere. The Court of Appeal Abuja reserved judgment on the appeal filed by a former Speaker of the River State House of Assembly, Martin Amewale, and 24 others against the Speaker of Itoko Jumbo and five others in a virtual sitting. The appellate court adjourned after parties in the suit adopted all their briefs in the matter. Ms. Amewale and others are asking the court to stay execution of a high court judgment which saw them out of office and that whatever decisions made by Mr. Okujumbo uh, should be set aside. They are also asking for accelerated hearing in the matter while contending that the order made by the trial court was without jurisdiction. And still on the river's crisis, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Kayode Betokun, has justified the barricading of local government secretariats in the state, saying the action is meant to prevent breakdown of law and order. Fielding questions from journalists in Abuja on the sideline of a conference with commissioners of police and other senior officers, Mr. Betokun says the police will continue to occupy the secretariat until a court of competent jurisdiction delivers judgment on the local government crisis in the state. The reverse issue, you are all aware, is in court. The police will wait for the outcome of the court case. Whatever the court decides is what the police is going to do. Yes, we have our men barricading the secretariat as of now. We are doing that to prevent breakdown of law and order in that state. We are all aware that in, in what happened two, three days ago, we lost a police inspector. We are sad about that. We don't want to lose more men. We don't want to lose more Nigerians. We don't want to lose more citizens of River State. So we have a duty to prevent breakdown of law and order, and that's why we have our men taking over those secretariats while we await the outcome of the case in court. So immediately the court makes the pronouncement Vacate the secretariat. Seems the political drama is not in short supply. In Kaduna State now, protesters under the auspices of Kaduna Citizens Watch for Good Governance have called on the EFCC to probe and arrest the former governor of the state, Mr. Nasser El Rufai. The group protesters stormed Kaduna State Government House urgent Governor Ubasani to mandate the EFCC and other agencies to prosecute the former governor following his alleged indictment by the State House of Assembly. Our concerns. One, we condemn in strongest terms possible the outright and merciless looting of our states, which has widened the poverty gap in the state by the immediate past administration. Two, we commend Governor Obasani for holding on to the ideals of the democracy he works for by not interfering in the activities of the Kaduna State House, as many people expected you to stop the legislative arm of government, government from doing their work as it was done in the past. Former members of the Kaduna State Executive Council under the administration of Mr. El Rufai, former governor, refuted the report by the Kaduna State Assembly. A statement jointly signed by some of the former commissioners we'll reads, the, the Kaduna Obasani. State House of Assembly report is irredeemably riddled with falsehood, predetermined conclusions and misrepresentation. The report is bereft of rigor and accuracy and fails to demonstrate any understanding of the various matters it purported to investigate. And on to health matters, the Lagos State Government has announced that the total number of deaths from cholera has risen uh, to 21. That's from the 15 previously reported, with the total number of cases now at 401. This was disclosed by the Special Advisor on Health, Dr. Kemi Oguyemi, who revealed uh, that following the last update on the cholera outbreak in Lagos, which reported 350 suspected cases and 15 fatalities, additional 51 cases have been discovered across Lagos, with Lagos Island, Koshofe, and Etiosa recording the highest numbers. After meeting with members of the Lagos State Public Health Emergency Operations Center, Dr. Okoyemi said the rise in cases was anticipated following the Ilea festivities during which large gatherings occurred. She however noted that suspected cases are subsiding across local government areas, particularly in previously affected ones. 
Well, security is up next as the Nigerian army has taken possession of two helicopters as part of efforts to combat insecurity and uh, other insurgencies challenging the nation. Speaking at a brief ceremony in the nation's capital, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tarid Language, says the helicopters will be launched into operations of the Nigerian army immediately to aid the fight against insurgency. Our journey to realizing our dream of a Nigerian Army aviation has come to reality today and we must give credit to those who dare to dream and conceptualize this journey. Aside from initial plans to train pilots for the Nigerian Army, which took place about 38 years ago. We even went a notch forward by procuring some platforms then, the G222 were procured for the Nigerian Army Aviation and the Airborne Corps that was to take off in 1986. And outside the country, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte is set to become the next Secretary General of NATO after his only rival dropped out of the race. Romanian President Klaus Ioannis informed the military alliance he was withdrawing his bid at the end of last week, um, his office said yesterday. The two had been vying to replace the incumbent Jens Stoltenberg, whose term expires in October. And while Mr. Rutte is the only remaining candidate in the race, he is yet to be officially confirmed by member states. For sports news now, Spain secured their spot in the last 16 of Euro 2024 with a scintillating performance against defending champions Italy. Well, they created countless chances and were utterly dominant, but won by a narrow scoreline thanks to an own goal by Ricardo Calafiori in the second half. Meanwhile, England wasted the chance to secure their place in the Euro 2024 knockout stages as Group C winners as we're fortunate to take a draw from what has been described as a dismal display against Denmark in Frankfurt. Gary Salgate's side will have topped Group C with a win after the earlier draw between Slovenia and Serbia, but we're ultimately grateful for a point from a disorganized uh, and what has been called a mess of a performance. Whew. And there you have it, the top stories at this hour. But what are you saying this morning?